<laughs> Alright, yos. So we got a few talking points in this video just because uh, the. Unfortunately, I get quiet sometimes. Uh, actually, I just remembered something. Hold on. Uh, but yeah, so we got some talking points. I have texted them to Allie for this video, just in case she wants to chime in with anything. The landlord. So our talking today, points today will be the character of Spider-Man, the character of Spider-Man Miles Morales, the Spider-Verse movies and comics, the Secret Invasion comics and show, the state of the MCU, and the future of Marvel. Hopefully we can get all those talking points done today and at a natural rate, but that's just a little behind the scenes look at what I've got planned today. I was playing Dragon Ball yesterday, and I came up with a few. There, were, I, I had a few comments to make about the MCU and the comic books, and you know how I'm just not vibing with it anymore. And you know, I was talking to some friends, and I'm like, you know what? Do I just hate Marvel now? Is that what it is? Do I just hate Marvel? That is not, in fact, the case. Um, first of all, I don't really think we have to say too much about the character of Spider-Man, given. We're playing his game right now. So. But let's see. We're going to go ahead and... Uh, clear out... We can clear out this section down here. We'll start with this photo op right here. Uh, so instead of going over the character of Spider-Man, let's go over notable appearances. Um, I guess tying into Secret Invasion, I, I really liked his characterization in that book, but uh, given that he wasn't really the main character, didn't really have a lot of room to shine. I did like the plot twist uh, halfway through the book where the scrolls come down from space solely because in that book I thought the ones coming from space were our actual heroes I thought the one talking to Kazar was a scroll the fact that I thought the humans were coming from space and the aliens were on the ground is just a marvelous execution of writing and paranoia uh, in comic book form Jonah paid me the big bucks. You know, obviously the aliens will be coming from space, that's obvious, but I was tricked for... But I was tricked. Uh, oh, there's a bag up here somewhere. Um... Superheroing doesn't leave much time for good hygiene. Gotta get it where I can. But no, I, you know, I thought his characterization in a lot of comics is great, but for some reason I just can't handle his characterization recently. Not only do I think a lot of the books that they're, a lot of the stories they're telling are pointless, uh, I personally don't like the stories that they're telling. I personally don't agree. You know, me and my friend had difference of opinions. I was like saying, oh, well, I don't really like that, you know, MJ's just cheating on Peter anymore. <laughs> Granted, I haven't read this book. I've just read the articles and the articles, so I, I'm aware, but beyond the simple fact of just, you know, I disagree with how I'm being told that the characters are written, I don't find anything in these books worth getting into. 
but I do see, um, you know, Miles' books being a little too much lately. So moving on to Miles, I guess. I think. Uh, I think the whole what if Miles Morales was Wolverine, what if Miles Morales was Thor, what if, what if he was Captain America, all these books are really, really bizarre. I think it just seems like to be them cashing on Spider-Verse. Aside from that, I'm also not crazy about the stories he's been appearing in. Civil War 2 is a pretty big exception. I didn't care for that book or how it characterized a lot of characters, but I thought Miles was amazing in it. I thought Miles was amazing. I thought the evil Captain America twist was pretty cool. Um, I just didn't like Captain Marvel's characterization in there at all. But to be honest, I haven't really liked any of the Civil War books. The first series Civil War either turning Iron Man into a the kind of person where he kills his friends just because he disagrees with them not really the kind of stories I'd like to read he straight up in case you forgot the original Ant-Man stopped working in the middle of a trig exam Huh, you get what you pay for. And beyond that, I, I personally, I don't think comics are as good as they were back then either. I think that kind of also contributes to comics not selling as well. I'm very excited for Wolverine vs. Predator. Um... But that's just a big crossover event with two of my favorite characters. So, of course, I am. Uh, but the stories that. Hold on, we should listen to this. will help me balance work in a personal life if I ever find time to read it. But I mean, Secret Invasion was thoroughly captivating trying to read that, even though it was built off of the Civil War book, which I didn't care for. Uh, the Ultimate Universe was... I mean, just the peak of Marvel for a, a time. It, it it went it went it went pretty bad with like Ultimatum and all of that stuff. But still, it was the pinnacle of Marvel for quite a while. And then, uh, there's another landmark I haven't done. Oh, I need to do that one. And, I mean, there's just a lot of things that Marvel's not doing very well. I still love reading all of those books, so I can definitely say I don't hate Marvel, but I don't care about any of what else they're doing. I didn't even really care about the all-new, all-different, uh, just because of how it was written. It was clearly just them trying to get more diverse faces and figures for Marvel when uh, they could have done that and just said it was the next generation and it would have been fine 
and they could have had the next generation working with the previously established characters. Instead, they kill off Logan to give Laura more of a spotlight. They kill off Peter to give Miles more of a spotlight. Technically, that was the Ultimate Universe, and I, I liked it when they did that, but that's just an example of, you know... I didn't care for the Wolverine thing. I didn't care for... Uh, they did that with Captain America too. Now we have the, we have we have Captain Falcon, which I, I like. Not gonna lie, but the way they went about it wasn't great. And I like that the comics are being are used to experiment, and what works they put in the movies. But sometimes the comics just felt like more of an experiment than anything else. And also constant, I guess back to the characterization of Spider-Man, constantly like fucking with him. He's married, he's not, he's gonna be happy with Mary Jane, never mind, she's with someone else. That kind of stuff was just annoying to read. Seeing him go back to high school so often was pretty annoying too. The MCU did that, sure, but, like, that's their Spider-Man for the first time. It's not like a bunch of retcons and stuff, because Marvel does not reboot. They just retcon. So effectively, all the Spider-Man books have been retconned. They're no longer worth reading because it's not going to matter. Maybe. Now, in the comics also, Miles Morales did have the problem of just being a black Peter Parker. Um, and having no defining characteristics. Uh, this is a common opinion. I'm not going to speak for anyone but myself, but I'm not the only one who holds this opinion. Uh, and at the end of the day, it is also just an opinion. But, uh, it's a sentiment shared by a few people that I heard, and I thought to myself, yeah, that's accurate. I really love the version of the character we have in this game, and the version of the character we have in uh, the Spider-Verse movies. And we can talk about those later. See that coming. Why won't you die? Yeah, uh, also another thing that we don't do a lot in. Uh, that we haven't done a lot of until this point. Uh, stealth is a pretty cool mechanic. We've done it a little bit here and there, uh, but not too much. All right, it's time to bust out my super move. Bitch, 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 bitch. Bitch, 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 bitch. That was my that was my plus ultra move. Nothing tops that. That's why Spider Man's the respected hero that he is. Oh, fuck, I don't have the upgrade yet. Going 
Come on, give me them perfect dodges. Never mind. Fuck. I just got perfect dodge every day. Them ding on dangers. Mine. Fuck. Dead. There's an upgrade to increase the timing on it. I think I need to get that. Or just not be a bitch. Really? More guys? I don't have this many friends. Ah, I'll fuck. Alright, hold on. I checked records and that site's been getting delivery from cartel front company. They're moving drugs, huh? Not for long. Awesome, perfect dodge achieved. Did not see you there. Bitch. 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 Later, dude. Where's that coming from? Up there. Dead. Yuri, I got a bunch of incapacitated criminals and designer narcotics all wrapped up and waiting for you. Great, I'll just consider this an anonymous tip. Alright, we're gonna pause it here and we're gonna go over our next talking points. Hopefully. Well, we'll probably continue on with the Miles Morales thing, honestly. And then lead into the Spider Verse thing. So, I'll see you around.
All right, y'all, welcome back. We are down here swinging. We're gonna do this side quest, and then we're gonna jump to the main quest. Well, that was disappointing. <laughs> All right, and up and over. God, Kiki's. Well, bitch, bitch. Now there's only one more of them. Oh shit, that guy has impeccable aim. Breaking stuff is the answer. <laughs> it's fun too. Here we go. Spider Man, it's working. I'm starting to get a weak signal. It's garbled, but I picked up something about Fisk and outfits. Fisk was the kingpin of crime, but he didn't deal in knockoff fashion. The sooner the system is fixed, the sooner we know what they're planning. Only one jammer left.
Okay, that's the last of them. The system should be back online. Spider-Man, the crime system. Shit right. Some lit shit right there. Any more info on fist men or those outfits? Alright. No, but the system's reporting unauthorized activity down by the docks. I'm sending coordinates now. I'll check it out. Alright, I'll be back. Gotta get to the docks before they escape. Fuck. So in terms of Miles Morales' character, uh, characterization in the comics, I love that, uh, I loved the story of Peter Parker's death in the Ultimate Comics. Preceding that was stuff with Captain America and Punisher, and I did not like the characterization of either, but the way it served Peter Parker's story was pretty good. Um, and, uh, as far as... Um, as far as uh, like later on it's been revealed um, Miles was there that night that he saw Goblin kill Peter um, that he uh, had already developed his powers but was too scared to help out I thought that was Excellent. So that his him feeling guilty uh, for you're not dead. You're chilling. You're vibing. I never noticed this little detail of them being fine. He's not even unconscious. He's, we're vibing together, bro. Got a little water on him, knocked some sense into him, and we're friends now. But, uh, from there on, it's just so not really anything different about him. Uh, in fact, I could be wrong about this one. I don't think he had any different powers at first either. I think it was just the usual swinging around. Sorry to spoil your oh, this right is guy. interesting. Pretty sure the only thing different about him was the color of his suit. Uh, but when, but then this game came out, and it started setting up a really cool take on the character. And then uh, Spider Verse came out, and I absolutely loved that version of Miles. My uh, friend Ethan said because of uh, that first Spider Verse movie, Miles is his all-time favorite Peter, uh, Peter, all-time favorite Spider-Man. That uh, Miles Morales to him is way more compelling than Peter Parker. I'm not sure I agree with that sentiment, but. I mean, it just goes to show that this is a really well-written character. I did not care for the comic book's version. Comic book version is great in like stuff like Civil War II, but that's after they changed it. That's after they took him from his universe and brought him into 616. And so I, I thought it was absolutely... I thought he was fantastic in those movies. Um, I really thought his... And, and it's even fucked up what they reveal in Across the Spider-Verse that, like, Peter Parker would still be alive if Miles hadn't been there that night. It doesn't make Peter Parker's death Miles' fault, but he certainly feels like it is. Um, and you know, the fact that the Council of Spider-Men that we see in, uh, the Rick and Morty, the, it's the Council of Ricks, the Council of, it's the Spider Society, the, the Council of Spider-Men that we see in there are mostly Peter Parker's telling him how he's got to live his life. But there's only, like, there's an infinite number of Peter Parker's, but there's only, like, one Miles. I mean, there's there's a few miles I'm sure out there, but for most part, it's all Peter. Hold on. Yeah, 
I see your point, but Spider-Man stopped those guys today. Saying he's like them because he wears a mask isn't fair. It's like prejudice. Wrong. Here's a little lesson in the English language, my friend. Prejudice means to prejudge someone before you know anything about them. I know all I need to about Spider-Man. He runs around causing chaos, wearing a mask so he doesn't have to answer for his shenanigans, and a flashy costume so he gets attention to see his gigantic, insatiable ego. Now, if I'm a man and I see him getting all this coverage, what am I going to do? It's called copycat behavior, people, and it's ruining New York. But I mean, um, you know, an infinite number of Peter Parkers, one Miles Morales, uh, and he's being bossed around by all these Peter Parkers, and then he's being bossed around by Miguel, who really has no idea what the fuck he's talking about. For for multiple reasons, Miguel. I mean, one, there's even a great theory I saw about Multiverse of Madness, how. The incursion that Strange caused is the same thing that happened to Miguel's second universe. How it had nothing to do with the these so-called canon events. I bet in the third movie they're going to reveal that these canon events are bullshit. But that's to be determined at the moment. Ooh, computers. But we'll see. Uh, ah, fuck! been declared a safety hazard stop that right now this is highly sensitive equipment that's it I'm calling the mayor's office directly Peter Parker how the hell are you speak of the devil mr. Osborne oh please how long have we known each other it's mr. mayor <laughs> it's Norman 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 what do you think you're doing the grant agreement you signed has strict safety provisions. This isn't your first violation. Those were excused. By me. We should have confiscated this equipment long ago. But... but I've had a breakthrough. <laughs> Thank you for your great service to our country. These folks will escort you to Oscorp Robotics, where you'll receive the latest in prosthetics. No charge. This isn't about safety infractions, is it? I'm trying to help you, Otto. You're free to continue your work. In a secure... I know Mance want, just wanted, like, a new arm. Always were the smartest guy but he's going on. Changed a bit. Neither of you. Hey, Peter. Harry will be coming back from Europe early next year. Maybe the two of you can start that business you always talked about. This is opportunity knocking. <laughs> yeah, Europe, sure. Definitely not. Easy, easy, easy. Maybe he gets a jazzy new suit. Maybe we can start over. Peter. There's no we. Without the grant from the city, I can no longer pay you. I need some time to think. If I were you, I'd look for a new job. Sudden unemployment. Let's fucking go. 
God damn, this game looks so much better on this TV. My TV didn't have HDR. This one fucking does. I love the shoe pattern, by the way. That looks fucking cool. We're gonna switch suits now. To the Ben Riley Scarlet Spider. And its ability for cloning. So, yeah. Ask him to talk to his dad. Norman never listens to Harry. He even tried to kill funding for his research stations. Nearby. See how they're doing while Harry's in Europe. There must be some way to help Doc. I'll think of something. Your tax dollars not at work. Surveillance towers an expensive bust. Folks, I have to once again defend myself against the spurious claims from McDonald Mac Gargan, aka the Scorpion. Yes, as I fully disclosed. I bankrolled the experiment that gave him superior strength, speed, and that unsightly cyborg tail. The idea was to create an anti-Spider-Man who is not a threat and stops menaces. I had no idea he was crazy. Do you think his resume said Psycho with a poisoning fetish? His lawsuit is a transparent attempt to reduce his sentence at the raft by placing the blame for his deeds on me. And that is one package J. Jonah Jameson refuses! Yeah, I find that interesting. Uh, that's... comics or anything like that. Though I'm pretty sure the story is the same there. I absolutely love one remark he made or, um, earlier in one of my other videos about the Nazi made of bees. That thing's name is Swarm, and in the Ultimate Spider-Man cartoon, he's just actually just like an Ultron robot. So not as cool, but... Bitch, 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 bitch. Oh, I still hit him with the door somehow. Manhole cover. Bitch, Hongus. Oh, hey, I got a second focus meter some at some point. talking point is going to be regarding Secret Invasion. The comic book I was reading was fucking awesome. It came out in 2009 and I mean that was just good shit. 
honestly. Um, it was suspenseful, it was mysterious. Uh, you, you really had no idea what was going on at any given moment. And the uh, series on Disney Plus was quite predictable. I still enjoyed it a great deal. Um, but it was on a much smaller scale than the comic book, and it just didn't carry those themes over correctly. And the risks were... seemed very minimal. I loved the ending of the series, where they have no idea... They have no idea who's a scroll and who isn't. There are people murdering other people because they think that they're a scroll. Uh, and that's great. That's the kind of suspense we should have had the whole series. But instead, it's reserved for the ending. For a show called Secret Invasion, it sure tends to spell out to you who the scroll is. The only scroll that wasn't spelled out was War Machine, but also, if you've been on the internet for a while, you kind of knew he was a scroll. And I mean, the reasoning, it's kind of funny, because the reasons... Everyone's like, oh, he's a scroll, because he was played by Terrence Howard, now he's played by Don Cheadle. And, uh, obviously, he looks a little different now, so that's why he's a scroll. Why would a scroll make themselves look different from the person they're impersonating? What is it trying to make me take a photo of? Oh, Alias Investigations. This is Jessica Jones's place. I'll see what this says. Nothing that we can fucking read. Whoops. But I'm guessing uh, this is an eviction notice. And this is the Alias Investigations logo. It's just literally printed on a piece of cardboard. But, um... Yeah, like, I mean, I was able to figure out, hey, War Machine's a scroll pretty easily, and he's the only character you could have possibly done that with where it would have been pretty easy, but instead, they literally show you who all is a scroll in, like, the first five minutes. It was great to have that tactics and espionage stuff back, but it just... The show should have been more than that. The show, the whole show should have just been just like the ending, where you don't know who to trust. Instead, it just turned into that. Because in the comic book, you had no idea what was going on. The comic book also went more into the lore of the scrolls, which I liked. We don't really get a whole lot of that in that show. There's a little bit, but... I ever took. 
The Department of Environmental Protection will take it from here. Maybe I should make a green spider past him for Earth Day. Well, Harry Station just stopped a public health crisis. Oscorp's gonna have a hard time arguing it's not useful. Shocker has escaped, and now he's robbing a bank on East 31st. What happened? I thought he was behind bars. He was, but one of the guards just walked up to his cell and released him, then gave him his suit back. I knew Shocker was working for someone. What did you get out of the guard? But he's dead. Whoever made him release Shocker didn't want any loose ends. Damn. Looking at the security footage, the guard was in some kind of trance. And it might have been the lighting, but it looked like his eyes were glowing. Well, that's creepy. Okay, I'll see what I can get out of Shocker when I get to the bank. Uh, as for the future of the MCU, after Endgame has not been smooth sailing for them. Uh, there's stuff like WandaVision and Loki, which don't miss a beat, so there's no reason to really talk about them. They take advantage of their... of the medium. TV, TV series, you know, Disney Plus. Um, but, hold on. I think I might have just lost my job. The city, Norman actually, pulled our funding. I'm sorry. If Harry were here, he'd talk some sense into his dad. If you'll find another source, it was too important. Thanks, MJ. Talk to you soon. Let me just keep throwing shit. Bitch, 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 bitch. Mega bitch. So, you're all going to jail. Where I bet you'll be as good at breaking out as you were at breaking in. Disorganized crime. Fist mobs. Desperate last days. But they take advantage of their, uh, so, I mean, WandaVision and Loki take advantage of their episodic nature. Telling a story that can only be told in that medium. I mean, make a few modifications to it, you could tell it in a movie, but as it was presented, it was told in a meaningful way. Uh... Moon Knight is a pretty good series too. I like that one a lot, but it even suffers from this whole limited runtime thing. Its first two episodes are used establishing the characters, the third episode is used to establish the story, fourth episode is used to. The fourth and fifth episodes are used to build stakes, and the sixth episode is used to finish it, and it all ends up feeling rushed. And, I mean, WandaVision's the only show that didn't really feel rushed. I think even Loki felt a little rushed. But Loki definitely was able to take his time in the final Norman. episode, which is something the other ones Long haven't had. Hey, I'm no lawyer, but, uh, I'm pretty sure that's a parole violation. Uh, then there are movies like The Marvels, which just came out. I have not seen it. I actually do want to go see it, but I have not currently. Uh, it just... Seems to face punch it is. Damn. Whoa, your gauntlets are all digital now, aren't they? You wanna fight? Uh it's got this weird freaky Friday kind of approach to storytelling. Bless you. Uh approach to storytelling when they could be telling a truly meaningful story. The postcard scene of the movie, which I won't spoil, I had spoiled for me, uh, help seems to help further contribute to the multiverse saga that they've been, that we're supposed to be focusing on. But if you go to Disney Plus, look up multiverse saga, there's like one whole movie in there that actually has any fucking thing to do with multiverse. 
and none of them are building a particularly great picture on what this saga is supposed to look like. Whoops. Damn. Dead. You brought this on yourself. Literally. Well, that was kind of jarring. So let's see. I mean, you got Doctor Strange. You got Doctor Strange, Loki. And what if? That's really all you got for your multiverse saga. Yeah, for some reason, Moon Knight. Uh, Quantumania actually is a good one for multiverse saga, I think. But Moon Knight. Uh. Moon Knight, Shang Chi. Eternals. None of these contribute to the multiverse. Uh, no way home. No way home features multiverse, but there's zero way that that ties into anything. Let's have the fact that it connects to Doctor Strange. Fight with Shocker took a while. Time to catch up on what I've been missing out with Sid. All right, we can go ahead and oh god, let's go and clear these this sector right here for the radio towers, which is this way, right? Masked Gang Rob's Gallery.
Doc left a message. Peter, I might have been a bit hasty advising you to find another job. I have a plan. Give me a bit of time. We may yet live to invent another day. The indomitable Otto Octavius. That's great news. Hope his plan works. But the thing is, this multiverse saga idea, there really wasn't anything they can do to... There really wasn't much they could do to make it work. And, I mean, not to mention, the, I guess in their defense they've had a lot of, uh... A lot of things getting in their way, but... They're going after Fisk? Damn! Thinking what I'm thinking? Brewing gang war? Let's try to get ahead of it. Are there any fist properties that haven't been hit tonight? Let me see. Patrol reported a bunch of activity at one of his shipyards in Portside. Thanks, Yuri. I'll check it out. But, uh. Hey, Yuri. Any idea what Fisk uses that shipyard for? No idea. Let me send an they had a lot of problems they ran into it's that weren't their fault. So that that you know, we're unfortunate. The death of Chadwick Boseman. They had to retool the entirety of Black Panther 2. Um, just tragic. And there's not really any way to get away from that. Um, no one's fault. Just happened. Got in the way of their plans, obviously. Uh, then the writer strike came in. MJ wrote this article in the school paper about student protests. She was a heck of a journalist even then. Hmm. But no, uh, there, there was a lot of a lot of stuff going on that they had to retool a lot of what they were doing. COVID got in there and fucked up Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, there were some things they had to change in terms of just how they were releasing the show. Uh, to be fair, though, that show felt again like a movie that they just kind of cut into segments. I didn't really take advantage of the episodic narrative. Uh, and so you have shows like Arrow that are 23 episodes long. Uh, 21 to 23 episodes long a season. Um, shows like Daredevil. And, and by the way, Arrow had a lot of filler. There was not there was not a need for that many episodes. Um, and so oftentimes pacing got bogged down a little bit. Um, and then you had... You have shows like uh, Daredevil or Punisher or Luke Cage or Iron Fist or, you know, all of those shows, which were about 13 episodes on average, if I'm not mistaken. And um, that seemed to be the perfect pace. They even had plenty of time for Daredevil to have two filler episodes a season um, and still tell a very compelling narrative. Uh, and then you get to Disney Plus, which gives its shows six episodes. That is so incredibly short. Now, what Disney Plus calls them is limited series that are supposed to be like one and done. But what kind of stories are you going to tell in that time frame? Especially when so many ep some of those episodes are only 15 minutes long. Um... What what narrative? What story are you trying to tell there exactly? You can't. You, you just can't tell anything in that kind of time frame. Loki and Wandavision had the most episodes, and uh, as a result, uh, they told a much better story than the other ones even had a chance to. Moon Knight could have benefited from like two more episodes, tops, and that show would have been fucking goaded. Assuming the episodes were well written, of course. 
obviously you put in two more bad episodes than shit. You're not really helping anyone. But I don't know. I, I feel like Disney's limiting themselves way too much. Marvel's limiting themselves way too much. And in the movies, again, they're telling stories that we don't give a fuck about. The Marvels, you could have had a, an interesting story there about the scrolls, about the Kree, about the relationships. Uh, you could have had some world ending stuff there. You know, some or some defining character moments, you know. Instead, you gave us Freaky Friday with superpowers. Again, I haven't seen it, so. I'll work out a fabric that warps sound and light waves. A stealth suit would really come in handy. Hmm. Let's go ahead and fill out this. We're going to focus all of our points on this one. We're going to max it out, and then we're going to max out this one, and then we're maxing out this one. So, right now, let's go ahead and do this one. Uh, we're gonna max out. We're gonna take out these towers, then we're gonna call it for a night, for the night. Um, but I mean, shit. I'm not gonna say I'm a world class writer. I'm not gonna say I know what the fuck is going on. But I look at the things I like, and I know what I like. And then I look at the things that I dislike, and I, you know, I, I know exactly what I dislike about it. Secret Invasion actually made the episode count work. Every way I'm getting better and better. Why doesn't it ever feel like it? I was always confused about this one. I don't know what this is. Um. Oh yeah, and as for Marvel stories in the comics, I'll have to read more into them to see why I don't like them. Because uh, I just know that I don't. I haven't really given them the, ch the time of day either, but... I mean, you had literally. They wanted to make superheroes named Snowflake, Snowflake, and Safe Space, and uh, I'm not one of the go woke, go broke luck, kind of people, but. But are you fucking serious? Really great people there, and Jameson. Good luck, you'll need it, Jameson. Dickhead, Eddie Brock. Betty Brant, Gloria Grant. I want to see this world's uh, Eddie Brock, see what he was like. Um, but there are so many, so many missteps that they've made, and it, it seems like very, it should be very obvious. Um. Now, the other thing is they wanted to make so many dis different Disney Plus series. Uh, and I guess they had to spread the budget accordingly. Whereas if they cut axed a few series that we didn't need, they could have put the budget all in one spot, and that would have been a bit better. Hey, so this gang war between the demons and Fisk is really heating up. I know. Even shockers have been to running jobs for the demons. These guys are serious. Do they just want to... That'd be bad enough. Hope it's not something worse. But it is what it is. Um, hopefully Marvel gets their act together soon. And I think that about covers all of our talking points. So let me check real quick. Where'd my phone go? I think that makes for a pretty good video. Future of Marvel Comics is the only one I have left. Uh, well, I mean, they've got... They've got some stuff I am looking forward to, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it is uncertain. Uncertain. Jonathan Majors obviously went uh, to... He's having a he's going his 
his shenanigans are not YouTube friendly, but um, he's going to court soon. I, th I, I'm, you know, I believe innocent until proven guilty, so I won't uh, judge too harshly or say my full opinion because there's still a lot to be discovered. Uh, but I have heard some things, and I think he's probably going to get out free. His case hasn't been dismissed, but I mean, his alleged victim uh, was seen partying after he got arrested, which is a little, a little interesting. Not exactly the battered, um, I don't know. I, I can't really say my full thoughts. Um, but no, I think Jonathan Majors will get out fine, and then he can go back to playing King. But I even think that they're pivoting away from the King story. Because uh, there are a lot of behind-the-scenes changes for Avengers 4, well, no, 5 and 6. King Dynasty uh, just lost its director um, and writer. And now the writer and director team that are working on Secret Wars are going to be doing the Kang Dynasty one. I beat this wrestler right after getting my powers. I never had that much money before in my life. Or since, come to think of it. A hundred dollars? That's kind of sad. Um... But yeah, I think Jonathan Majors will be... exonerated, and I'm hoping, you know... He didn't do this. I'm hoping. I'm hoping. I'm not just hoping that he gets out scot free for what he did. I'm hoping that it just never happened the way it was told. Um, playing Kang, and we can just forget about all this. And then uh, after Kang's done, I mean, Loki wraps up the story of Kang pretty well. You don't really need him to fight the whole Avengers. Ant Man beat him. That's their problem, dude. They had Ant-Man fucking beat Kang. They had, like, a fucking B-tier Avenger beat the final boss. And you want us to... You you want us to... wait around for him to fight the whole fucking Avengers? That is great timing. The Avengers Tower is right there. But I'm sorry, if Ant-Man beat Kang, Spider-Man could beat Kang. Why do I need to wait till Spider-Man busts out his amazing friends? It, it's done. They're gonna have one. I'm thinking Kang is gonna be a f either they're pivoting away from their original story, or Kang was always meant to be a fake out. And we're about to find out. Uh, Doctor Doom, Fantastic Four, all that stuff that's happening looks really good. Um, they just need to learn. Pedro Pascal is Mr. Fantastic. That's... Well... I don't really... see a problem with that casting. I find it interesting because of the characters he has been playing who are kind of hard-headed, and now he has to play someone who's really intelligent. Just because you're super intelligent doesn't mean you aren't hard-headed, but... This is going to be a very different type of role for Pedro Pascal, and I think that's going to be really cool. Because the Mandalorian, Joel, they're not crazy intelligent, and they are kind of hard-headed. They always do what they think is right, but that doesn't mean that they are always right. And now you got to make Mr. Fantastic a character who is the smartest person in the room and you have to make him someone who knows he's the smartest person in the room so I don't know I'm interested on in how he's gonna play that role and I'm hoping it's well written I'm hoping it's I don't know they really just need to go back to the original Avengers movies or the original MCU movies. 
take what worked, make it into a science, and then bring it to the new slate of movies, because it's not working for me. I haven't really been particularly impressed since Endgame. I'm not going to say I don't like these movies since Endgame. I'm not saying the MCU's dead since Endgame, but I have not been impressed like I have been. Now a lot of people ask me what I think of Mayor Oz. Let's ask our first caller. You're on with J. Jonah Jinks. Hi, I think Mayor Osborne's doing a terrific job. He's cleaned the city up and expanded the economy. With all due respect to the office of mayor, the police cleaned up the city. And entrepreneurs boosted the economy. I do approve of many of the mayor's initiatives, like cracking down on quality of life crimes and reducing red tape. But I think he takes credit for a lot of things other people do. He's ambitious, which is not a bad thing. But I always say, be careful of people with agendas. We used to have a vigilant press to keep politicians honest, but it's a shadow of its former self. Now all you've really got is me. 